Welcome to Bob's Book Club. How often would you get lost in a book? You know, when all time stops and you get completely consumed by the book and its contents. Well, that happened to me recently with a behemoth of a big blue book that I purchased. And it's this one here, and it's called Logo Beginnings. Written by a chap called Jens Muller from Germany, it's a stunning collection of over 6,000 logos from around the world. And it traces the evolution of registered logos from 1870 right up until 1940. Don't worry, there's another book, a sister book called Logo Modernism, which traces logos from 1940 right through to 1980. That's a big red book and we'll save that for another day. And so this book here, Logo Beginnings, it starts with a brief history of the registered logo. And it stems from the mid 19th century when businesses and brands were starting to expand, not just regionally, but nationally and internationally. And the consumer was looking for a, a sign or symbol for something that would give them confidence to know what they were buying. Now, the earliest trademark laws in the US and several European countries were from around 1870. And the earliest trademarks in the US was this one here, which is uh, for Avril Paint Company. And if you look in the picture, you can see like a tin of paint and a paintbrush somewhere there with the words economical, beautiful and durable. A very complex logo. Compare that to the earliest trademark registered in Europe, which was in fact Bass Brewery from Britain. And here you can just see the simplicity of the red triangle with the you know, typography of Bath in joined up letters. Guess which one still survives today, you know, over 150 years later. The book also highlights some of the advantages and benefits of a registered logo. For instance, it talks about Coca-Cola and how they submitted a near 700 page document in 1923 about counterfeit um, or very similar businesses with similar logos. And you can see them here with all the different you know, array of images. One of my big takeaways from this book is how logos have evolved and continue to evolve. Sometimes you know, brands get it right and the logo changes very little over a hundred years. Think the likes of you know, Ford Motor Company, General Electric or um, Rolls-Royce. You know, those logos have changed very little. But then there's others where you can really see the, you know, the, the difference in the logo. And here's just one example of Pathé, taking you from 1898 right through to 1999. And over the hundred years, you can really see how that logo has evolved and continues to evolve. Another example of how logo has evolved over the years is Shell or what was Royal Dutch Shell. And here you can see how you know, the shell has featured heavily in all the logos right from the origins of when the you know, two original companies merged right through to the modern day. And in fact, it was in 1971 when a Parisian designer called Ramon Lowe, who's you know, very famous, uh, won a competition. And since 1971, the logo hasn't actually changed that much. It's really how they've applied the system. Um, and in here we've got you know, examples of how Shell has you know, used a system or design manual to really kind of unify their brand identity. And then we have one of my favorites, and it's the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, also known as 3M. And here you'll see the first registered logo used the words, and very soon afterwards, they became 3M. And that was used right up until 1978, when Siegel and Gale were commissioned to radically you know, revamp their logo to give it a fresh, more modern look. And that's when the famous Helvetica was used throughout and they developed that, that brand manual for how they apply 3M and all the sub products. One of the sub products of 3M, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, are the post-it notes. And you can see the 3M in the corner and also the post-it still uses that Helvetica style. 
If you're in design, marketing, you know, branding, or you're starting your own business, then this is the perfect book for your know, ideas and inspiration. And it's a beautiful book just to have on your shelf. Um, if you want to kind of switch off the evening, then all you need to do is just open it and study any particular page and you'll be inspired. Within here, there's plenty of examples. In fact, 6,000 examples of circles, squares, triangles, and typography. And so I thought I'd introduce this behemoth of a brilliant blue book. I've certainly enjoyed you know, thumbing through it over the last few weeks and probably spent far too many hours getting lost inside. But before we go, think about a brand or logo that you admire. Do you know the history behind it? You know, who designed it? And what year was it first registered? Well, chances are, if it's been around for you know, 100 years or more, then it'll be covered inside this book. And lastly, how would I rate the book according to our EGSP framework? Well, it would have to be E for excellent. It really is an impressive collection of logos. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name's Bob Buckley, and this has been Bob's Book Club. If you like what you've seen, then please hit that button to subscribe. If you're wanting a bit more, then move over to our website at 12scholars.com and hit the button to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.